Hey darlings, welcome back to my channel. Thank you very much for being here. I really appreciate all your support so far. If you are new to my channel, please subscribe and turn on your notification bell so that whenever I post a new video, you don't miss it. So earlier on, I shared a pattern on how to make a corset. And with that pattern, I altered it a little bit to achieve this piece. This is just a sample piece. I'm yet to make the original piece later. But I opened my windows to show my family and friends how I did this. So if you want to know how I achieved this, make sure you watch to the end. So here is the pattern that I used. And I'll put the link on the description box below if you want to watch a video on how to make this pattern. Starting off with this piece, this front piece and back piece, place it on your fabric. And I just cut out this area these are the areas i added my seam allowances for the corset at these areas i'm pointing out as you can see and if you've noticed i didn't add any seam allowances here okay so that's how the pattern is it depends on how your own pattern works so you add your seam allowances where necessary and this is where my own falls in so it depends on the pattern you're using you may have your own separate corset pattern you observe the rules there what i did next was to work on the cup pattern and as you can see here these areas will not need seam allowances okay but the areas that will be needing seam allowances is these areas that i'm pointing out right now as you can see from this lane up to the upper part of the cup that is where we'll be needing seam allowances so the next thing i'm going to do is to place it on a sheet of paper like this and i'm simply going to trace this out on another paper because I don't want to dismantle my original pattern. So I'm just going to trace it out on this paper to make a duplicate for the work. I encourage you guys to do the same in order not to get your original pattern distorted. So after I traced it out, this is what it looks like. And the next thing I'm going to do right here is to measure down the sides from this area right here I'm going to measure down one inch right here down and at the other point as well i'm going to measure down one inch here too and i'm just going to use a straight line to connect it to each other i'm going to do the same here and right here and i'm going to connect it straight to each other and then after doing that this is what it should look like then after doing this the next thing i did was to number these areas so that when i finally cut it out in pieces i won't get to mix it with each other so i just numbered it from one to four in order to identify each piece after cutting it out so i'm just going to go ahead and cut this out now after cutting it out this is what it looks like and the next thing i'm going to do right here is to cut out this number one and the number two part of it to separate it from the three and four so right here i've done this already and the next adjustment I'm going to do is based on number one and number two piece. And I'm going to keep three and four aside. So the next thing I did was to put one and two right side to right side to each other. And I'm going to pin this out like this, like I'm going to stitch it with half an inch. So the reason why I'm doing this is because I want to cut it on a fabric as one piece. So next... I'm going to open this up like this, place it on my fabric and cut it out. You can leave yours separately, maybe cut it out on different colors of fabric just to add spice to your work. It all depends on what you want to achieve. And as you can see, I've added in my seam allowances at the appropriate place. Remember, you add seam allowances based on the pattern you are using. Then the next thing I did was to cut out a fusible interface for this upper part of the cup, and this will help your bra cup or your corset cup to stay firm so the next thing i'm going to be working on is the number three part of the cup you can see right there i've made some indication marks right there and how you're going to achieve that is by measuring one inch from this point down measure one inch after each one till the last one so i made three strokes there and you're going to take this down with a straight line you're going to connect it down with a straight line down to the bottom part and when you're done with that you should have something like this the essence of this line is to indicate where the stripe will fall on our fabric so after you must have made this indication line the next thing is to place this 
on a plain sheet of paper, your pattern paper like this. And the next thing I did was to use my gum paper to hold it down on this paper. And as you can see, I've labeled these strike lines, these areas, these pieces, I've labeled it already so that when I finally cut and spread it, I won't get to mix it up with each other. So that's the reason why I labeled it. So the next thing I'm going to do right now is to take this area down from here. I'm just going to mark a slant line following this line and I'm going to extend it out to create space for opening of these slash lines. So now you go ahead and create your slant line from this point downwards. And when you're done doing that, you should have something like this. And this line will aid us to move our pattern pieces in the right direction while creating the space for our stripe. So now the next thing I'm going to do here is to slash based on where I've made my markings. And when you finish slashing it or cutting it out, this is what it should look like. Okay, you cut through the whole line. So before I move these pieces, I'm just going to indicate where my seam allowance is going to start at under the cup area so that when I separate these pieces, I won't get confused on where to add in my seam allowances. And remember, I told you this is all based on the pattern you are using. As for mine, my seam allowance is going to start from this point. And I'm just going to indicate that by using a red marker on it so that when I open it up, I won't get confused where it should start or end. Now, as you can see, I've indicated that already. And now I'm just going to move my pattern pieces right now. And the aim is to create one inch space between each of the pieces. And I'm going to move it down like this. I'm going to move it down towards the line that we created earlier alone. Okay. So I'm shifting it down to create one inch space between each of these pieces right here. Now the next thing I'm going to do is to use my paper gum to hold it down. And as you can see, I've done this already. So the next thing I'm going to do now is to trace this out exactly as it is right here. And even the under part of it, I'm going to trace this out on my pattern paper. So after connecting these lines to each other, after tracing it down on my paper, this is what it looks like. And the next thing you are going to observe is how to add your seam allowances, okay? And it's very important you trace this on that post part very well because the more you trace it based on how it opens, the easier it's going to be when you're going to join it in later. So now I'm going to show you how I added my seam allowances at this area and at the underbust area. Remember that we indicated where our seam allowance is going to end at the underbust area, which is right here. So based on the pattern I'm using, this is where it's going to end. And it depends on the pattern you are using as well. So make sure that you trace out this underbust area delicately, as it's going to help you while plating later. So now I'm going to add my seam allowances. And the first place I added my seam allowance is at this side of it and I stopped right here okay so to add the ones under the bust area you have to extend this line following this slant areas right here you're going to place your ruler like this and you're going to extend these lines individually like this and after extending it when you get to the area where your seam allowance is going to end you're going to measure down on that line half inch on each line half inch of the these lines as i'm showing you right now and after doing that you're going to follow the points and connect it to each other just as you did for the main lines and when you are done this is what mine looks like and this is what yours should look like if you follow the instructions properly now i'm going to go ahead and cut this out and we'll go over to the next level so after cutting out my pattern piece to ease folding in later, I'm going to mark half inch in between this one inch space we created above and below it. I'm going to mark out half inch above and below, then pleat into it.
for easy folding in of these spaces. So as you can see, we created the pattern by moving down on our, our pattern pieces. So we are going to move it upwards to close this pattern piece. So following the same flow, we're going to reverse the flow right here. We're going to bring it up to each other, matching these pieces together. And as you can see, it is flowing right there. Once you mark that half inch, I told you earlier on and press it together, folding it will not be difficult. So I'm just going to hold this down with a pin and I'm going to show you what it looks like. So this is what it looks like after I pinned it down and give it a good pressing. So I encourage you to fold in your pieces gently so that you don't tear off your pattern pieces. It can be tricky at times. So I'm going to shred up these excess pieces below it. And when I'm done with it, this is what I end up with. As you can see, this part three of our pattern creating is almost over. So I'm going to remove these pins right here and I'm going to tear off these ones above. As you can see, I'm going to remove it gently so that we're going to have our original pattern which we are going to be using to cut out our fabric. So you do this gently in order not to rip off your pattern piece. The next thing I did was to make this pattern to become flat by ironing it out a little bit and I'll place it on my fabric. I placed it on my fabric like this and then I'm going to trace it out on my fabric then cut it out exactly as it is on the pattern piece. When I'm done cutting it out on my fabric, I moved it down a half an inch a bit to see from the paper to the fabric because I want to mark in all these half inch that I marked here onto my fabric. As you can see, I want to mark, transfer all these markings on my fabric so that when I'm going to fold it in, it won't be a difficult work for me. So I encourage you to do the same for both the left and right pieces of your fabric. What I did at this point is to pleat it exactly as I pleated it on my pattern paper earlier on. So this is what it looks like. One is for the left side of the bust area, while the other is for the right side of the bust area. Now on this point, I placed the pattern on my fabric and I gave the seam allowances at the appropriate place and I cut out. First, I cut out the net fabric and I cut out the underlining part of it right here, as you can see. And you cut this out for both the right and left side of the bust area. What I'm going to do first right here is to join these pieces from the right side of the fabric instead of the wrong side as usual. So this is what I mean. I join these pieces from the right side of my fabric and I'm going to shred this off right here. And this is done just to keep the under part of your garment neat because this is a see-through fabric. So I did same for the back piece and I'm going to shred this excess fabric off. To cover up these rough edges at the right side of our fabric, I'm going to create an impression of a boning channel by cutting a strip of fabric and the length depends on where and where you want to add it. You'll understand it later on. But the width is about 2 inches. And what I'm going to do next is to fold this into two and I'm going to stitch it with half an inch. After sewing it about half an inch, folding in, as you can see right here, the next thing to do is to turn this inside out. And to do that, you're going to be using a needle and a thread. You're going to put your needle through the outer part of your seam line like this. And you're going to drag the tail of the needle out from the other side of your channel so if you have not subscribed to my channel yet please click that subscribe button below and put your notification bell on and if you are enjoying this tutorial so far make sure to give this video a thumbs up and now that you've dragged your needle out at the other side you're going to use the tail of your needle to drag in few pieces of this like an inch or two in okay and once you've done that you're going to hold both areas gently while you drag out the thread from the other side. As you can see, it's coming out. So this is it. 
and you're going to give this a good ironing then the next thing you're going to do right here is to place this part of your false channel onto the dart areas where you saw earlier on here you're going to place it along this lane on each part of your pieces for the front and the back piece you're going to place it like this and you're going to stitch it along this part on both sides of the channel so i also attached this to the midpoint of my front piece and i also did so for the back piece as well where the darts were sewn in and this is what i mean i also did this for my back piece so you can freely put this anywhere you like on your corset or you can also put it on the side seams as well the next thing i did was to cut out the interface for the upper part of my corset by sliding in a piece of fabric at that region so i'm just going to trace this out and at this point i'm going to measure down four inches right here and at the other side of it i'm going to trace this out and at this side i measure down six inches so i'm just going to cut this out and after doing that this is what i have we're going to do something similar for the front piece so after cutting this out the next thing i'm going to do right here is to hem the bottom part of the interface and we're going to set this aside and sew on the zipper to our back piece just like this so after sewing in your zipper the next thing to do is to sew on your interface by opening this zip up and i'm going to show you how to place your interface now as you can see i've opened up my zipper all flat out next i'm going to place my interface on top of it as you can see the interface is lying wrong side to the right side of my main fabric and this is the right side facing me so here i'm going to sew like one cm away from the zipper tooth right here and i'm going to take it along this line by half inch right here and towards this area so the next thing i did here after stitching the interface onto the main fabric as i showed you earlier on the next thing i'm going to do is to notch these areas along this line okay and then i'm going to cut off the excess zipper showing right there so the next thing i'm going to do after doing this make sure you cut this excess fabric off in order to make flipping over to the right side easier and smoother so i'm going to turn this to the right side of my fabric and when i've done that this is what i have and the next thing i'm going to do right here is to top stitch along this lane and we'll go over to the next level now for the front piece we are going to cut out the interface for the upper part as well and at the side seam you're going to measure the same six inches as you did for the back piece right here okay and you're going to use the same technique that you use for sewing the back piece to sew the front pieces together now to sew the cup area the upper part of the cup area the first thing i'm going to do is to place my main fabric on top of my fusible interface that I cut earlier on and I'm going to stitch this all around and set it aside and for this area the first thing I'm going to do right here is to stitch this to the fabric underneath it and then I'm going to hold my pleats down with stitches and then before stitching it together I'm going to stitch on the breast part I cut earlier on I'm going to stitch it to the main fabric like this okay so the next thing i'm going to do right now is to put both of them together and hold it together with st stitches then after doing that this is what it looks like and i'm going to slash off this ss fabric right here the next thing i did was to join this interface part together just as i did for the main fabric and i'm going to set this aside after doing that I joined the upper part of the cup area to the lower part of the cup area and after doing that I made sure I cut off this excess fabric right here. So the next thing I'm going to do now is to do the same for the lining pieces of this cup area. Now the next thing I did was to place the interface that I've made exactly like the cup area 
on top of the main fabric right side to right side to each other and i'm going to smoothly sew this down removing every sharp edge as you can see right here and i've cut out all the extra pieces right there so the next thing i'm going to do now is to turn this inside out the next thing i did after turning it inside out is to stitch along this part and also top stitch this upper part all through after doing that the next thing i did was to sew the cup the bra cup into the main fabric from here up to this point and from this point up to the other end on both sides of the bust area now the next thing i did was to join the side seam together by placing the back and front piece together after sewing it this is what it looks like and then i measured two and a half inch up here and i'm going to slant it to the center front and i'm going to do the same for the other side and when i'm done this is what it looks like so the next thing i did was to cut a long strip of fabric like this and this fabric is about eight inches width that is right here is eight inches width and the length of it is two times the circumference of the lower part of the corset so i'm just going to fold this into two like this i folded it into two like this and i and I stitched this edge on both sides of the strip. Then I'm going to turn it inside out. And after I turned it inside out, I stitched this upper part of this strip. And the next thing I did was to pleat it along the lower part of the corset. And that is it. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Let me know what you think about this project in the comment section below. And if you are new to my channel, don't forget to click that subscribe button and turn on your notification bell so that you don't miss any of my tutorials. I really appreciate you guys so much. And also guys, let me know between this project that we did today and the former one, which is this corset. Let me know which you prefer and also if possibly why. And I'm going to put the link for this tutorial also down on the description box below. See you guys in my next tutorial. Bye.